Let's talk about SQL injection. In the previous video, we saw how queries and mutation work and how you can type your own queries according to the schema in GraphQL. In this video, we are going to see how we can manipulate those queries to exploit a vulnerability called SQL injection. And for the lab, we are going to use DVGA. So, finding SQL injection in GraphQL is very similar to non-API application. You find an endpoint or a parameter that is interacting with the application database and then you try to inject some SQL payloads to check if it is vulnerable to it or not. That's exactly the same thing we are going to do, but in the parameters of queries. We are going to perform SQL injection union attack. What is union? So the union keyword lets you execute one or more select queries and append the result to the original query. But there are some conditions that has to be met. First is, both queries must return the same number of columns. And the second is, the data type in each column must be compatible between the individual queries. We will look at it step by step. So first I'm gonna move on to my GraphQL console over here. And type in a query. There is a paste object which is used to retrieve all the paste that is uploaded by other users. Here I'm going to provide parameters. That is public, true, because I want all the paste that is public. And then filter. First we are going to see how does this query work. We will see the normal functionality of this query and then we will try to exploit it. So here is the filter parameter and this is expecting a string through which we can filter paste according to the string. I'm gonna go back to the application and from the public paste, I'm going to copy this uh, sentence and paste in the filter. And then I'll provide fields, ID, content, and title. Send the request and this is how the response looks like. We have got ID content and title and in every title we can see the keyword that we provided in the filter parameter. What is this even? So this filter keyword is interacting with the database to fetch data for us or in this case, paste for us. So let's see if it is vulnerable to SQL injection or not. So I'm going to remove this sentence and add a quote here just same old SQL code to test for SQL injection. And in the response, we can see SQLite3.operational error. Obviously, this is vulnerable to SQL injection. And we are getting some bunch of other data. So it does tell that it is using SQLite3. Let's inject one more query, quote or one equals one. So if this condition is true, it's going to show me all the paste because one is indeed equals to one, right? And here we go, we have all the paste here. Total of 12. If you want me to confirm it for you, go back to the application, open up the dev tools, go to network, refresh the page, open up the GraphQL endpoint, and go to the response and see there are dual paste. So there are dual paste that has been fetched, and here we can see that. In order to perform union attack, we need to find the number of columns in the current table. For that, we will use auto by clause by incrementing the specified column index until an error occurs. So the syntax goes quote, auto by, one, and then the comment. Send this request and we have no error means there is one column. Let's increment it to 2 and send the request again, and we have no error. Increment it to 3 and 4, now send the request, means there are more than 4 columns. 5, no error. And in the 9th column, we finally have an error. 9th order by term out of range should be between 1 and 8. So this confirms that there are a total of 8 columns. The second step would be to find a column that can hold string data. Now the syntax will change. Type union select and change the first column with 
a keyword with a letter A or any other letter is just have to be in quotes. If the letter is reflected in the response means that column can hold string data or has a string data type. We can see A is being reflected in the response means first column is holding string. Time to check for the second column. In this case, I'm going to type works and we can see it is being reflected in the response means the second column can also hold a string data type. Assuming there is a user's table, I'm going to type union select username and password from users. Send the query and in the response we can see username and password, all clear text. And this is very critical, we are able to retrieve the passwords of the admin. I assumed that there was a user's table but let's say you don't have any idea about the table name, what you will do in that situation. I will recommend you this cheat sheet of SQL Lite injection from github i'll give the link in the description there is this command for extracting the database structure i would like you to try it out yourself type this command but with nulls for eight columns of course you should be able to see table names and the columns it has so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed watching it